For many years, a guy named Kurt has been trying to become famous online. He does all sorts of things on his channel Kurt's World 96, including draw my life videos, gaming, reviews of shoes, and talking about his favorite keyboard shortcuts. He also shows off his dad Chris, who works as a DJ and divorced Kurt's mom a long time ago. Because his mother had been so upset over this, Kurt decided to be a good son and live with her while earning money by babysitting. No matter how much he records though, Kurt hasn't found a loyal audience for his videos, his numbers never reaching the double digits. This is very different from Bobby and his channel Bobby Base Camp, a kid Kurt used to babysit and is now a famous influencer. Kurt sees himself as Bobby's friend, but Bobby just tolerates him and pushes him away from his own camera. After 10 years of failed streams, Kurt reaches a breaking point and is ready to give his channel one last shot with something he calls the lesson, which is meant to teach people how to gain an online following. He starts by preparing his car with lots of cameras and a bunch of water bottles, saying it's step one of the lesson, if you're not documenting yourself, you just don't exist. This car will be used by Kurt to work as a driver for a rideshare app called Spree, and the first passenger he picks up is a man that refuses to put on his seatbelt and is suspicious of the cameras, but Kurt just tells him there for protection. This guy also preaches the gospel of white supremacy and Kurt's worried that this racism could hurt his live streaming audience, which is currently just Bobby, so he begins driving a bit more recklessly. The guy complains, but Kurt just encourages him to drink his free bottled water. It turns out that this water has been poisoned, and Kurt even made a whole video tutorial on how to do so without getting caught. Then Kurt puts on some music and speeds through a stop sign as the man dies in his back seat, coughing his life away. Kurt's only viewer Bobby thinks the kill was all an act for views, but Kurt is fine with this because this is part of the lesson. At first nobody should be able to tell that what he's doing is real, because he wants to get as many done undetected for maximum attention down the road. Kurt's next passenger is a snippy realtor who leaves her sign in the trunk. After some chit chat she goes for a water bottle by her own choice, quickly becoming Kurt's second kill. Kurt goes to the back seat to show the body properly on camera and even jokes that he may drink the water as well. At that moment Chris calls Kurt to ask him for a ride, but Kurt just hangs up on him. Then he proceeds to cover his tracks, he unlocks the woman's phone using her dead face and gives himself 5 stars on the ride app, then he answers a text message with a rude message so the woman won't be expected at a work meeting. After getting rid of the body, Kurt picks up his next passenger, an abrasive meathead named Mario. Kurt tries to play some of his own music but Mario complains about it, he also refuses to touch the free water. Then Kurt takes a detour to pick up another passenger, ignoring Mario's complaint since it was him who chose the pool option. The passenger is a famous influencer and stand-up comedian named Jesse, who cancels the ride as soon as she hears Mario hit on her and walks away. Mario pushes Kurt into following her and Kurt offers to drive her for free just to get her in the car. As he drives, Kurt hears she's got a huge following and asks her how she did it, to which she responds she simply is funny. Then Kurt keeps asking for help and Mario keeps hitting on her with very inappropriate comments, so Jesse records everything for her social media before leaving the car, sick of these two creepy guys harassing her. Now Kurt is upset because he lost a chance to make friends with a real successful influencer, so he suddenly changes routes and takes Mario to a distant construction site. He's been driving so fast that Mario starts feeling sick, and Kurt makes him leave the car to avoid having barf on his seats. Mario complains but still leaves because he needs to relieve himself, and at that moment, Kurt plays his own song at full volume and speeds up to slam his car into Mario, making the body fly above the car and land on the front window for a perfect bloody angle for the camera. After dumping Mario's body and cleaning the car, Kurt stalks Jessie on her social media and sees that she has a stand-up show that night. He sees this as a sign, saying that he and Jessie are two big things happening on the same night. Obviously Kurt isn't big yet, since he's still having single-digit viewers and his only tipper is Bobby, who still thinks the murders are fake. That's because he's a very fake creator himself, he is always playing pranks on the homeless and the one time he supposedly helped them it was all acted for the camera. This is nothing like Jessie, who people like for how genuine and relatable she is. Moments later, Kurt stops at the gas station, where he gets rid of the realtor's sign and refills the tank while arguing with Bobby, who tells him he's boring and that he should spice up his stream. Once all the blood has been cleaned from the car, Kurt tries to spice up things like Bobby said by driving recklessly for his next passengers, a trio of socialites that includes Richard, Kendra, and London. At first Richard and Kendra are terrified by the way Kurt drives, but London is excited because she feels like she's on an adventure and jumps to the front seat to chat with Kurt. Eventually Kurt goes off route again and drives the trio to a junkyard, telling Richard and Kendra to hang out the sunroof because there's a beautiful view here that is perfect for social media pictures. Richard and Kendra play along and actually have fun, but then Kurt begins driving faster and suddenly closes the sunroof, trapping his next victims while his song plays in the background. At that moment some wild dogs from the junkyard jump on Richard and Kendra to feed, and Kurt takes a power drill that he keeps in his car to kill London with it. Afterward, Kurt takes his vehicle to the car wash and calls Bobby for his opinion, but he sadly didn't see Kurt's triple kill. He actually stopped watching the stream because Kurt just doesn't interest him. 
Kirk demands to know why Bobby hasn't given him a shout out yet like he promised, and Bobby tells him he should be more like Jesse because she comes across as authentic. Kirk checks out Jesse's socials again, but jealousy makes him comment bitterly in the most nitpicky ways, like saying she doesn't even film her stories vertically. While a bitter Kurt drives to a house in the suburbs, Jesse posts the video she took in the car to burn Mario and Kurt, then she visits her grandma to take good care of her while recording it for her social media. Suddenly the door rings and she worries because they weren't expecting anyone, but it's just a fellow stand-up comedian Mike that wants to discuss some work-related things. It turns out Kurt is actually visiting Bobby, who tells Kurt to go away because they're not collaborators or friends, and all this is being said in front of the camera for his fans to hear on his stream. Bobby insults Kurt as he comes closer demanding help, and Bobby's fans end up going to Kurt's stream to see the other side of the argument. Kurt suddenly stabs Bobby with a knife as his stream finally reaches double digits. Bobby tries to defend himself with a gun, but after some struggle, Kurt overpowers him and kills him, although his audience believes it's all fake. Kurt jumps into triple digits by hosting his stream on Bobby's feed and even records himself showering to get rid of all the blood and going through Bobby's things. At that moment his dad texts him, saying that he needs a ride to a gig. At first Kurt doesn't want to help him because he wants to go to Jesse's show, but when Chris mentions he'll be meeting a famous DJ, the chat recognizes the name and Kurt jumps on the opportunity. Kurt picks Chris up and their father-son relationship is obviously awkward, making them quickly fall into an argument. Chris is shocked to find Bobby's gun in the car and scolds his son for it, which only triggers yet another fight that doesn't stop until they have to hide the gun because the cops are nearby. When they finally make it to the club, they meet with the famous DJ known as Uno, and they ask her if she can tag Kurt's channel in a post. At first she says no, but then she gets tired of being there and agrees to do the shout-out if Kurt drives her to a taco truck. Eventually they find a taco truck and Uno demands Kurt to take pictures of her and then wait in line for her as part of the deal. The queue is quite long, so Kurt shares some disgusting stories to scare customers away. Meanwhile Uno looks around the car and finds the gun Kurt took from Bobby, which she uses as a prop to take a few selfies. Then she drinks some water, but this turns out to be one of Kurt's special brews and she immediately passes out. By the time Kurt gets back into the car with the food, Uno is nothing but a body and he quickly gets rid of the water bottle. Unfortunately this gets the attention of the cops, who come over to ask Kurt to perform a field sobriety test while Kurt pretends Uno is his girl and she just fell asleep. Suddenly Uno wakes up because she didn't drink enough to fully die, and seeing the cops, she panics and shoots one before running away. One of the cops goes after her, and when Kurt takes the chance to escape in his car, he's also followed. All this is boosting his livestream viewers all the way up into quintuple digits. Desperate to lose the cops, Kurt begins driving like a maniac and ends up crashing a homeless camp, killing a few hobos on purpose before his car flips. Meanwhile Jesse's been given a ride to her show by Mike, who keeps bothering her and saying he has all kinds of contacts. This guy also does a little opening before her but doesn't make anyone in the audience laugh. However the public immediately goes nuts when Jesse takes over the stage, and hidden in a corner is Kurt with his gun. After a few of her usual jokes, Jesse talks about her spree experience with Mario and Kurt, saying that Kurt's starvation for social media followers gave her a bit of self-reflection. Happiness can't be found in a high subscriber count, and no matter the number of views, you're only getting judged and hated for other people's entertainment. She finishes her set by smashing her phone on stage, ending her reliance on social media with a mic drop and leaving everyone in shock. Touched by her speech, Kurt decides to leave without making any kind of mess, only to learn that the spree service is temporarily suspended, thanks to his murder spree. Kurt gets a ride through another app called GoGo, -Go, and gets in the car of a friendly man called Dabbit that quickly makes a joke about not being the crazy driver that has been killing people all night. Kurt takes this personally and doesn't hesitate to kill Dabbit in seconds. Back in the bar, Jesse is tired of dealing with Mike, who won't stop recording her even if she drops social media, and she decides to ditch him by calling for a go-go. Dabbit's car arrives, but it's Kurt doing the driving, and he reveals to Jesse that he's the driver from earlier that she made fun of in her set. He also tells her that he was at her show, so he knows she's not gonna be able to use her phone for help because she smashed it. Thinking that Jesse's helpless, Kurt informs her that he's taking her to his home so they can express love instead of hate, but Jesse fights back with a phone charger cord and strangles him until the car hits a trash container. Kurt stops the car with a huff and responds by punching Jesse, knocking her out. Then he drives her to his front lawn where he drags her body into his headlights. He pulls the audience on what he should do with her, and the watchers choose he should kill her. Kurt gets ready to run her down as his viewers spam the chat. However when he stops to adjust a fallen camera, he loses sight of Jesse, so he leaves the car to look for her while the chat calls him out for his dumb move. The audience turns out to be right, Jesse uses the chance to get in the car and take over the wheel, immediately using the vehicle to run Kurt down. However she loses control and her driving results in the car crashing right through the side of his house, and Kurt has room to dodge it. Then he tries to kill Jesse by pushing her face against the airbag, but Jesse pushes him off and Kurt flees into another room. While Jesse tells the livestream that she needs help and tries to convince them this is real, Chris arrives as well and is shocked to find the house destroyed with Kurt's mother dead on the floor. 
It's then revealed that she was Kurt's first victim, he killed her off screen right before taking off to deliver the lesson. Suddenly Kurt comes out and grabs Bobby's gun from his car, which he then uses to shoot his dad a few times, quickly killing him. Meanwhile Jesse tries to escape in the car, but when going in reverse doesn't work, she just drives forward and crushes Kurt against the wall. The chat tells her to check on the body, and Jesse does so to discover Kurt isn't dead yet. She's forced to finish the job by smashing his head with his phone while a flashback to a few minutes earlier shows Kurt feeling like a champ because he had 50,000 people watching. Then the chat asks for a selfie with the body, and Jesse goes for it. The following days, Kurt's case becomes viral news. Jesse ends up more famous than ever as a multimedia queen, and though Kurt is despised by all reporters, he is seen as a hero by some of the scummier parts of the net like 4chan and Reddit. As these forums fill with adoration for Kurt, one user reveals they're making a movie about him called Spree, 